everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, first, let's address, yeah, I'm in uh, my kitchen, currently painting my office. So hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll have an official uh, kind of office studio set up for all of my future videos. But I know it's been a minute since I've released something, but I wanted to get some content out this week. So today I'm going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, the latest Marvel movie to kick off Phase 5. Saw this at opening night last night, and let's get into this. So, you know, this is definitely a, an anticipated movie. We're kicking off a brand new phase. Uh, from the trailers, we know that we're getting a new villain coming into uh, the Marvel world, uh, which is Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors. And um, as a whole, I was a bit disappointed with this one. I did not think it was the strongest of starts to get into a new phase, um, especially with a villain like Kang. Um, but let's get into kind of the goods and bads in this. So here we have, um, you know, Ant-Man, Scott Lang, just living his life. Um, we're kind of rushed through this sense of like, uh, how he's going about his day-to-day, -day, what he's doing to make money, his success. He's basically wrote a memoir. We know that he's got a podcast as well. He's just did a, you know, this book launch, and that's kind of more of the focal point in this movie is, is he's on his book tour selling his book. Um, you know, being a husband, being a father, and just kind of going about every day. But uh, things kind of ramp up pretty quickly as uh, his daughter Cassie has been learning about quantum, the quantum realm, and building a tool to basically signal down to the quantum realm um, to, to basically be able to see what's going on there. Uh, the goal of it was that if she had had this tool when Scott was trapped down there, she'd be able to pinpoint him and find him and bring him home easily. So she's basically just building this device, but built it as more of like a two-way radio. So we also get a little bit of backstory of what uh, uh, Janet was doing down there, um, her relationship with Kang early on, and how that kind of came to be and what she did. Uh, essentially, this is like one of those traditional stories of like, I'm keeping secrets from you, I'm not telling you everything. Um, and quickly, they are all basically warped into the quantum realm. And that's where things just kind of get a little bit messy at first. Um, you could almost compare this to like Disney's latest film, Strange Worlds. I mean, it's very bizarre. We're in this alternate reality, I guess you want to call it, where it's different from space and time. There are so many different beings and creatures and it gets to a point where this is basically like a Star Wars type film. You get all of these different beings, all of these different languages. It could have been kind of cool to get more depth to know like how they came to be, how they're there, have they always been there? Because um, some are very human-like, but they're not really human, and, and that even gets brought up at certain points. Um, but you definitely have this civilization that's living there, this whole world where... Uh, you know, people are doing day-to-day -day things. Um, they're trying to survive. But when I get into the Star Wars, I'm dead serious because it quickly gets to this point where you realize Kang is this Darth Vader-esque type villain. Everyone knows Kang. No one really wants to speak his name. They call him the Conqueror. And they're clearly terrified of him and what he's able to do. And... We get a lot of that ramp up to where it's building up to like this moment of when we're going to first see Kang. And then once Kang comes onto screen, the movie definitely changes pace. It picks up. Um, graphics were one of the worst things in this movie, especially early on. It There are some moments that are like very cringeworthy, uh, very rushed, very, you can tell like it's it's hard. It's, you can't avoid it. It's, it looks pretty bad. Um, but the later half in the film, it does pick up better. We also get a lot of moments that kind of felt like uh, when Spider-Man was uh, um, in the second Spider-Man movie, a lot of those kind of graphic moments of like, you know, Ant-Man's kind of splitting up and you get some very interesting things there that felt like we've seen them before. Um, they were cool, but I don't know, just... 
trying to think of like the full scheme of like what this movie is trying to accomplish if it was absolutely necessary. Um, but we do get some really cool action sequences. Um, the moments that we get with Kang are pretty awesome. He is definitely a villain to not play around with. Um, he's on a mission. Um, and he's he's got a purpose. Um, and that's intriguing enough to kind of continue on with where this could go. But the way that this wrapped up felt rushed and lazy as well. I just wasn't really on board with it in a way it almost felt like uh dr strange 2 in, in, in some ways it's kind of like they were kind of copying that just not as well and yeah like i just wasn't on board with the way this ended didn't really get me that excited um but the post credit scenes are interesting i'm planning to do a separate video to talk about those in depth because we do get into some realms uh, where you kind of need to do some other stuff to make sense. And I'm wondering if people are going to get confused by them. Either either get excited or confused because you're going to see some people that you may or may not know. Um, so yeah. So overall, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, I was a bit disappointed by it. Uh, a lot of it felt rushed, incomplete. Some very cool moments, some cool action scenes. Uh, one thing was super predictable, so if you listen to the Agents of Mace podcast, I pretty much called it out, so I'll leave that there. But uh, for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. Uh, I think the ideas there, uh, the execution just wasn't quite there. Um, Kang, awesome. I want to see more of Kang. Uh, it's always great to see Ant-Man on screen, but you're looking at... A script that wasn't good, graphics that were horrible, jokes that didn't land, and a movie that just felt rushed and lacked some substance and depth. So 6 out of 10, it's an okay watch. I'll definitely revisit this one again, because there could be some things that I overlooked, and it'd be cool just to revisit Kang one more time as he's being introduced into the MCU, but... It does get me worried for Phase 5 of where's the rest of this going, especially with Guardians 3 coming up. It's one I'm looking forward to way more than this one. I know that one's supposed to be a very emotional watch. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to that. So, if you saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Um, definitely check out the Agents of Base podcast because we'll be getting into all the spoilers. We'll talk about this movie and all of our thoughts there. So, I will leave this one here as a, more of a spoiler free talk and if you want all the spoilers go subscribe to the podcast link below and you can hear our thoughts on ant-man and the lost quantum mania so thanks so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe it helps the channel out i'll be back with more reviews very soon everyone have a great weekend and go watch more movies